Good afternoon. Happy Saturday. Welcome back to Baton Rouge, where we are getting set to talk to the LSU Lady Tigers. They are set for their Baton Rouge regional game tomorrow against Middle Tennessee. Happy to be bo- uh, joined by Flaugé Johnson to my immediate left, Angel Reese on the far end there, as we have been doing all week long. We invite you to ask questions to either player. Please raise your hand. We'll bring a microphone to you for since we're streaming. Uh, ask the player directly which, which player address them, which one you're asking a question. Please introduce yourself and your affiliation. With that, we welcome you back to Baton Rouge. Let's open up the floor for questions for Flaugé or Angel, please. Um, Matthew Burnett on three. Angel, just what can you uh, kind of take from yesterday's game um, and you uh, specifically going into Middle Tennessee? Yeah, of course. I mean, I have to be better offensively for sure. I think defensively and rebounding, I did a good job. But offensively, my team needs more for me. So being able to just finish around the basket um, better going into the second game is going to be something that's going to be important. BRZ TV in Baton Rouge for Angel. Um, your relationship with Shaq. As I watch you play throughout the year, I see you know you won't get the benefit of the calls a lot of times that you know that maybe you should I guess, and that's something that he dealt with. Is that a conversation that you guys have had as far as keeping your composure, playing with patience, those kinds of things? Yeah, I mean, um, he just tells me all the time, just stay calm, stay poised. I mean, he always tells me like you know who you are, and you're not going to get a lot of things because of who you are. So just trying to stay stay confident, stay poised. I mean, I have great teammates and coaches that still put confidence in me when I'm not making a lot of shots or I'm not getting the calls that I, that I should deserve sometimes. So just not getting down, not getting emotional, and not letting that affect my game. Chessie Boucher with WVLA here in Baton Rouge. Flage, you've had the task of really clamping down on some really great shooters this year. You have two to face tomorrow. What is it for you defensively to, you know, try to slow them down? Um, yeah, I think um, just kind of putting all of that into this game. You know, what I'm saying everything I've learned. Uh, I've clamped down a lot of players. Some games I got scored on a lot more than I would like to admit. But, you know, just taking the good and the bad and trying to figure out how to, you know, have a good defensive performance tomorrow, I think that's what's going to be about. Because Middle Tennessee, they can shoot. So that's what we're going to be working on today. Uh, for both the girls, we'll start with Flage if, if we can. Just um, Kim talked about yesterday maybe being an intention getter, you know, as far as commitment and focus and understanding that, you know, you could get beat. Uh, have you all done any scout and so far, you know, does it seem to have set in the messaging of, of focus? Um, yeah, we definitely um, have done scout. I said yesterday in the press conference that um, that was the first time all of us was on the court together. You know, what I'm saying in a long time, not just piecing it here, piecing it there, and you know, we really needed that uh, wake up call um, game. We know that game should have went differently, should have won by a lot more. But um, you 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 know, you say you need those games. I think last year, play Hawaii the first game, we didn't have as good as a game we should have. So, you know, I just think. It's March, uh, March nerves, March jitters. So we got that out now. We got to go do what we know how to do. You know what I'm saying? Because any team could have beat us yesterday with 20 plus turnovers. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, for either player, what did you learn from um, watching how Middle Tennessee handled yesterday's game, um, especially with the comeback? And I know their schedule is not like yours, but they have won 20 in a row and haven't lost since uh, December 30th. Um, how do you put that in perspective? Yeah, I mean, they're a super disciplined team. Um, they take advantage of matchups. They take advantage of turnovers. They take advantage of, advantage of mess ups. So understanding, like, we can't turn the ball over 24 times because they're going to maximize off of that. And they have a great team where everybody plays their role. They set great screens to sh- set up a lot of great shots. And you have to play for the whole shot clock. Their last seconds, they will come up and make some shots. And we saw that yesterday. They were down 17 at a point, And you see how they could come back and just easily beat you. So tomorrow, we can't get a lead and go up and then take our foot off the pedal. So just being able to just keep pushing, keep going through, because they are a good team. And they have beat. SEC team, SEC team this year, so they're a talented team. Corey Diaz with the USA Today Network. Uh, hopeful to get a thought from from both of you. Uh, I want to ask you about Michaela. Uh, you know, it's her freshman year, and she scored the first points for you guys yesterday. You know, in her first ever NCAA tournament game. But just how you guys, as her teammates, have seen her evolve and develop this year. Um, just what stuck out to you most, and and uh, I guess just how proud of you 
uh, of how she's been able to, you know, handle the, the ebbs and flows of her of her freshman year. Um, super proud. I, um, when she came in, I just you know just coming off my freshman year, just wanted to you know prepare her as much as I could. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just proud of her that she just learned how to try to keep her poise and compo composure. I talked to her a lot about that. You know what I'm saying? Just going into it like. Sometimes coaching isn't going to be what you want it to be in the moment. You ain't going to be hitting shots, but you just got to learn how to affect the game in a lot of ways. And I think she's becoming a well-rounded player every time she steps on the floor. Yeah, her confidence. I mean, as a freshman, I mean, last year we had Flaugia that was super confident. And then having another freshman coming in is super confident. These freshmen these days, I mean, they're <laughs> killing it. <laughs> um, I know I wasn't as, as confident like that as a freshman. But being able to have somebody on the team that is willing to do whatever it takes to win, I mean, when her shots – are not going in. She's affecting the game differently. And that's the difference from the beginning of the season to now. I mean, her maturity level, being able to understand, like, you can't have a, a great game every game. And we love that to have that. But I mean, defensively, she's also taking that in and taking accountability when she's not focused on her matchup or she's not defending the way she wants to defend or making making shots. So I think that's the maturity level of going into the tournament. Like, I think she's done a great job with that. Girls, we'll stay with Angel to start. Just, um, Flage talked about you know taking tough coaching. When you came here, you talked about you know that's one of the things you wanted. How has your relationship with Kim changed or evolved? You know, from what you thought it would be when you got here to what it is now. And Flage, the same thing for you. <laughs> I knew what it was when I got here. Um, I told her in my meeting when I was like, I want to be coach hard. I want to be pushed. I don't want you to make me feel like quote unquote the best player. Like I want you to make me feel like like. I'm at the bottom. I don't want to feel feel good about anything. Like in practice, like I can't take a playoff. Like and sometimes you see at the next level, like they'll let the big they'll they'll let the vets they'll let the big dogs take the take plays off. But I don't I don't do that and I can't do that in practice. And she gets on me a lot about that. And expectations are super high. And I think that would take me a long way. And I always remember that. Yeah. Um, same. I never won. Like when I was in high school, like I never won like a championship or anything told Coach Mookie that I just wanted to be a winner. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, we won my first year, so it was kind of like a little spoiled a little bit. But um, I, I want to be a winner. She know how to win. Um, she has a lot of basketball knowledge. And I think I'm just getting better, you know, the work I put in myself. And then, you know, just taking the gems that she gives me, I'm kind of just incorporating into what I do. Bryce Coon from 24-7 Sports to, to both players. Both of you kind of spoke to this throughout the season. but. Obviously, Anissa had a part in that game where mm -hmm. Poa just kind of said simply, she was a beast. And when, when that stuff happens, we just get behind her. And in a game like that, mm -hmm. survive in advance, how important is that in this type of atmosphere to just have a player like that that you can kind of count on in moments? Yeah, it's, it's, it's big. Um, Nisa, like, Nisa turn on real quick. Like, you know what I'm saying? She go through spurts where she scores, like – it's not like she'll score this one, then miss that. No, like if she gonna hit, she gonna hit about eight in a row. So um, I got a lot of my assist off her yesterday, just throwing it in there and she putting it up, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I try to hit her when she hot, but that just goes to show her maturity. I mean, she she, she has like a record right now. She has like 2,000 points and some other points. And you know what I'm saying? You need 1,000 rebounds. So she's just that type of player. Like you can really count on her. She's very reliable, very consistent every game. You know what I'm saying? So it's big for us going into March to have that. And she's older, upperclassman. So it's just, I think it's just that poise and that experience. Yeah, I mean, I, honestly, I think she's been a beast all year. And uh, I mean, I touched on this a lot, but like, I, I feel like I overshadow her sometimes and just being able to get a lot of attention on myself, but she doesn't really get the attention that she, that she deserves. She works hard every day in practice. She doesn't complain. She just puts her head down and grinds every day. And you love a teammate that does that because when I'm having an off night, you know Anissa is going to step up or just being able to have somebody that gives me confidence to keep going and going and going because she is a vet. Um, this is That was her first time last night being in a tournament and playing a tournament game. And you would think she'd be nervous, but you, you wouldn't even be able to tell that was her first time. So being able to have a teammate like that that pushes me and has gotten me better all year was something that's been great. Uh, Jonathan House, Sideline Sports Network, Middle Tennessee State Affiliate. Um, Angel, tomorrow you're going up against a two-headed monster. You know, you've got 6'5", um, Yulia Gravoski, and then you've got 6'6", Anastasia Boldreva. Uh, they have a combined 108 blocks on the season. Um, you know, what's the game plan going into that matchup, and how do you plan on getting around their defense that averages uh, or that forces 14 and a half turnovers per game, five blocks, and seven steals? 
Well, they have to go against Andrew Reese, Anissa Morrow, and Aaliyah Del Rosario. So they have to work on that and figure that out first. Um, secondly, we, we focus on our matchups, of course, in, in, in our film room. And it's no different from any other day, any, di every, any different night. Um, so we're gonna, it's going to be a team effort. It's not going to be just two matchups. Um, we have great guards as well, too. So it's going to be a team focus. If they focus on two players, they're in trouble. Angel, um, the thing that's impressed me most about Flage is, yes, they have asked her to do more defensively, but I think her athleticism and smoothness, for lack of a better <laughs> word, on the offensive end has really like exceeded my expectations, I guess. Just could you speak to the her game and how it's evolving still? Yeah, I mean, like like I said, from freshman year to, to sophomore year, defensively, I mean, usually you don't see the, the, that big that big jump. And she's taking that big jump. I mean, because freshman year, she had to guard a lot of top picks. I mean, I remember I always tell her, like, you got a Jordan Horston last year in the Tennessee game. Like, she was one of, the, one of the best players last year in the country. So when she's playing against these girls, that's why I give her that much confidence. I mean, the smooth around the basket, I'd be like, how did that be going in? I'd just be going around looking to rebound, trying to find a way. So she always puts on a show. Her and niece be making some acrobatic shots. I'd be like, OK, let me just get a rebound and get back on defense. <laughs> One yesterday. Yeah, that was. I was like, okay, let me just get back on defense. Yeah. I. It was so fast. Everything happened smooth. so fast. That, that was smooth. That was smooth. <laughs> I'm curious, and, and if both could could comment, that'd be great. I, I'm curious. This time of year, you know, if you lose, it could be the. It's a very abrupt end to your season. So I'm wondering right. if, like, you know, when you guys aren't in the building, if you're at each other's apartments or if you're like going to get something to eat, like do you try to spend as much time together this time of year than maybe you would a, a month ago? Uh, I, oh, go ahead. <laughs> I feel like it's kind of the same. We all don't live at the same apartment complex. Yeah. Most of the girls live on campus. Me, Flaji, and Haley don't live on campus, so it's kind of hard, but we're with each other all Every day. day. <laughs> um, I think it's it's <laughs> good to get space. a break. We need to get the, the space because, I mean, we win this game. We're going to be with each other all week, and I'm sure we're going to go from straight Albany to Cleveland. So I think some time away is OK. Yeah. <laughs> but we're with each other all the time. So it, it's fun. It's a sisterhood. I don't have any sisters. So I feel like college is like the best time ever, um, being able to just have a sisterhood and like make these kind of memories with amazing girls from different kinds of places, from different experiences and backgrounds. And like, I'll never, ever forget like just being able to be in college. Like, I, I, I love it. <laughs> yeah. I don't think y'all understand. like. We're together from August to April, April like yeah. it's okay to months. take a break. Yeah, it's a couple <laughs> months in between that. Like, you know what I'm saying? We spend a lot of time on the court. I don't know what people think college basketball is like. Like we just yeah. practice for an hour and then we outside all day. But no, yeah. like we're together. We, we got, don't even have like twenty four hours span without seeing each other, at least yeah. one person. Like yeah. we're seeing, we leave here at six, we're gonna be back up here tomorrow at seven. Right. Seven AM. So it's a grind. On that note, we appreciate your time, Flaugia and Angel. I know you got practice coming up for a little you. while. Thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. I'm going to remember you. We'll be back in about five minutes. Head coach Kim Mulkey joins us. Top of the hour, we'll have Middle Tennessee. We'll be right back here in Baton Rouge.
reporter for the Washington Post has been doing the past several years and the links he has gone to try and put a hit piece together. This reporter has been working on a story about me for two years. After two years of trying to get me to sit with him for an interview, he contacts LSU on Tuesday as we were getting ready for the first round game of this tournament with more than a dozen questions, demanding a response by Thursday, right before we're scheduled to tip off. Are you kidding me? This was a ridiculous deadline that LSU and I could not possibly meet, and the reporter knew it. It was just an attempt to prevent me from commenting and an attempt to distract us from this tournament. It ain't gonna work, buddy. Unfortunately, this is part of a pattern that goes back years. I told this reporter two years ago that I didn't appreciate the hit job he wrote on Brian Kelly, and that's why I wasn't going to do an interview with him. After that, the reporter called two former college coaches of mine and left multiple messages that he was with me in Baton Rouge to get them to call him back. Trying to trick these coaches into believing that I was working with the Washington Post on a story. When my former coaches spoke to him and found out that I wasn't talking with the reporter, they were just distraught. And they felt completely misled. Former players have told me that the Washington Post has contacted them and offered to let them be anonymous in a story if they'll say negative things about me. The Washington Post has called former disgruntled players to get negative quotes to include in their story. They're ignoring the 40 plus years of positive stories that, that people or they have heard from people about me. But you see, reporters who give a megaphone to a one-sided embellished version of things aren't trying to tell the truth. They're trying to sell newspapers and feed the click machine. This is exactly why people don't trust journalists and the media anymore. It's these kinds of sleazy tactics and hatchet jobs that people are just tired of. I'm fed up and I'm not gonna let the Washington Post attack this university, this awesome team of young women I have, or me without a fight. I've hired the best defamation law firm in the country and I will sue the Washington Post if they publish a false story about me. Not many people are in a position to hold these kind of journalists accountable, but I am, and I'll do it. That's all I'm gonna say about this right now, and now I'm going to get back to talking about my basketball team and winning this game tomorrow. All right, Coach, thank you very much. As you all know, you've been here regularly. Coach Mulkey usually does not make opening statements, so that's all on that topic. If you have questions about LSU's game yesterday and the win over Rice or the game tomorrow at 2 o'clock against Middle Tennessee, we will open up the floor to questions for Coach Mulkey. Please introduce yourself and your affiliation. And with that, we'll open up the floor. Yep. Coach, Matthew Bernithon, three. Um, obviously, Middle Tennessee's shooting and their, their guard play um, kind of got to Louisville late yesterday. Just what, what did you see in them, and how do you evaluate their uh, guard play? Well, let me, before I answer your question, let me say exactly what I think about Middle Tennessee's program. Rick Ensel is a Hall of Fame coach. Rick Ensel, I don't know how many years he's been there, but I guarantee you he's been a part of this. I bet in the last 20 years, he's beaten at least 25 to 35 Power Five teams. 17 of those have been out of the SEC. So it wasn't a surprise to me yesterday that they won. He's extremely good at what he does. His son's on his staff. He has one of my former All-Americans on his staff. Much, much respect to Coach Ensel and his family. They have treated me good through the years, 
They have sat with me at my son's baseball game in Louisville when we were all working in the summer. I love the Insel family. Now to answer your question, you know they're gonna shoot the three ball. They all shoot the three ball. So you're gonna to have to be very respectful of the three ball, but they also have size. They win, they win. I, I, December's the last time they've ever lost a game. So they're very confident, they're very talented, they're very good. The stuff they run will be very difficult for us to defend. Yeah, just what kind of progress have you guys made? Oh, Michael Cobble, WBRZ TV. What kind of progress have you guys made as far as defending the perimeter? And you know, obviously your defense has stepped up over the last couple of months, but is it where you want it to be? Well, I don't think I'm ever satisfied. I think we're much improved. Each team we play is different. The scouting report defensively will be different. Um, they get to the foul line a lot. They get to the foul line. They're pretty much up there in the country on free throw percentage. Um, we know they're going to make threes. It doesn't matter how good we defend the three, they're going to make them. Uh, what we've got to do is we've got to do what we do best, and that's make them guard us too. I think transition is an area that maybe we can um, uh, push it and run some. They don't have much depth. We've been talked about all year about not having much depth. They don't either. So um, hopefully it'll be a game um, that um, won't come down to people fouling out and we just get out there and play. Coach, Sam Doughton, GoBlueRaiders.com. You mentioned Nina Davis, who's an assistant on uh, Middle Tennessee <laughs> staff, and someone I know that, that you advocated for being on Coach Ensel's staff. How have you seen her grown since she's joined that staff, and as have you kept that relationship with her? Absolutely. Nina comes to my house. Nina calls me. Uh, I love that child. Um, we talk here about Anissa Morrow being an undersized post player and how good she is. Nina was that good for me at Baylor. Nina was like a ballerina in the paint. You couldn't block her shot. You couldn't block her out. She figured out ways to get her shot off. While it might not have been the most beautiful shot, you couldn't stop her. Um, she and I just have this funny relationship. Y'all know the um, show 48 Hours. And so it either took place in New Orleans or it takes place in Memphis. So me being from Louisiana, her being from Memphis, we'd go to practice every day. And I said, what's up, 48? And it was an inside joke between the two of us. Um, Nina is one of the few former players I have that got into coaching, and I love it. I wish more did. I have more managers that become college coaches than I do players. I don't know why that is, but I'm so grateful that Nina is in coaching and uh, what better person to learn from than the Ensel family. Chesson Boucher with NBC 33 here in Baton Rouge. Last night, we talked about Angel Reese not having the day that she wanted to have. She seems a bit fiery now. What do you expect to see from her tomorrow in round two? Well, I think she kept doing other things. When you're having an off night, you just don't shut down. And Angel didn't shut down. She had almost 20 rebounds. Um, do something when, when your shot's not falling or you just seem to be in a funk on the offensive end, and she did, uh, but that game's over. Uh, it's survive in advance. Uh, but Angel um, has been in situations before when um, she didn't play well, and she's always responded. Um, so she wasn't the only one that looked a little shaky yesterday, so tomorrow's a new day. Today is a new day. What did you see in that film? Anything that can help you going forward with the turnovers? Oh, Lord, I didn't go back and watch that. <laughs> Middle Tennessee's too good for me to worry about what happened yesterday. Uh, no, we're watching Middle Tennessee as soon as that game was over. Uh, we don't even talk about that game. Um, yeah, no, I'm not, I don't want to go back and look at that. Just uh, their bigs down low. You know, how far has Aaliyah come as far as being able to, you know, defend without fouling and stay in the game? Well, she got the two fouls quickly um, yesterday. Aaliyah is just, she's just gotten so much better. Her, um, her confidence is, is good, but what Aaliyah lacks, she can't control, and that's playing time, right? So the more playing time she gets as she gets older, the better she's going to get. So she's coming in, spotting Angel, spotting Morrow, and 
just look at how much she's improved in spot play versus when she really, really will get a lot of time in the future. Bryce Coon, 24-7 Sports. You just kind of mentioned, you know, we don't even look at what happened yesterday. Coaches talk all the time, this is truly survive in advance. What's the messaging of, you know, hey, you want to play better, but we've got a really good opponent on Sunday. I mean, how do you balance that just within the short turnaround? Well, you, you, you kind of don't talk about yesterday. Uh, you talk about Middle Tennessee because we've got to focus our energy today because we won't be on the floor tomorrow with a 2 o'clock game. We have to do everything today in the film room, everything on the floor. Um, so you don't talk about what happened yesterday. You talk about what we have to do to be successful. And um, they're very attentive. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of like you flush it. Coach Middle's a team that likes to use their sets a lot offensively when you have so many different sets to go of in, in a short time frame. How, how do you sort of prioritize, you know, planning around that? I think we do the same thing. So that, that I noticed that in, in watching them. Um, that's got to be an old school. Rick and Kim like to control who's going to get that shot and not just let them do what a lot of programs do now. And that's just freelance and whoever gets the best shot, take it. Um, to me, that's good coaching. Um, we're going to go over as many of them as we can. Obviously, through the course of the game, it'll be difficult. But I'm hoping it'll be difficult for them, too, because we're going to run a lot of sets. We have time for one more, if there is one for Coach. Just a softball here. Is there anything you want people to know about your relationship with your players? Huh? In regards to your opening statement, is there oh, anything? Oh, and I told you I wasn't going to talk about that again. Anything about your current relationship with your players? You better ask them. I think they love me. Coach, thank you very good. much. Once again, LSU and Middle Tennessee tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Coach, you got that. You were up late, right? You heard the time? All right. 2 o'clock tomorrow uh, here in Baton Rouge. We'll be back at 2.15. We'll have players from Middle Tennessee join us then.